What you're about to see is a real-life story, taken from the files of the police racket and bunco squads, business protective associations, and similar sources all over the country. It is intended to expose the confidence game, the carefully worked out frauds by which confidence men take more money each year from the American public than all the bank robbers and thugs with their violence. Captain Braddock. Captain Braddock, ready. The story of blessed expense began very happily with the happiest news in the world. Absolutely, the worst service station I, I ever, ever wanted my, my windshield washed up. Hi, honey, I didn't know it was so late. I'll have Mary drive you home, then you can bring the car back for me, okay? Nope. Joe? Joe, I went to see Dr. Adams this afternoon. Oh, what's the matter with him? Is he sick? Who? Dr. Adams. Oh, but... But he's the one that... Yes, Joe. Yes. A baby? Hey! You know something? Huh? On your left front out there, the fabric is showing off. If I was you, I'd take your left rear, put a retread okay, on it. Get, get, get out of here and get back to work, will you? Joe! Simon LeGray! You think he owned a joint already? I'm sorry. It's just that she told oh, me... No, no. I mean, it's just that I want to talk to Joe alone for a minute. That's all. Okay. I can take a hint. Oh, sure, oh. sure I am. Oh, think of it. Us. Hey, 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 this calls for a celebration. Look, you stop by that shop that sells Italian stuff. I'll hitch a ride and, and be home before you know it. Okay, Papa. Well, congratulations, Pop. Oh, why don't you mind your own business? Sorry, Harry, but why do you listen all the time? What's the matter? Ain't you happy? I'm oh, sure, but I'm three weeks behind on the payments on the station. I can't even meet these bills. Well, I told you what would happen if you tried to buy the joint. Me, I'd rather work with somebody else. Yeah, but I thought if I could make a go of the payments this year, I... Okay, okay. What's that got to do with the birth of a nation? You're supposed to be out shopping like you had done something. You know, a guy doesn't realize until he's married how stupid a guy can be who isn't. So it costs you a few diapers and that fancy stuff they pin around a bed. Did you ever hear of doctors or hospital bills? No nices? Money, money, money. That's all you think of. You worry too much. Is that living? Oh, skip it. I'm going to change clothes. Oh, wait a minute. I ran into a guy in a place once, see? You're always running into guys in places. Yeah, but this guy had the answer. Answer to what? For things like that, for guys like you. Get that, will you, Harry? Can you meet me after I close up? You know, the little place around your corner. I'll tell you all about it. Okay, okay, I'll be there. Hi, Father. Okay, Uncle. What's it all about? Wait a minute. Want one? No. Hey, you know what they charge for a bottle of wine now? Too much. Harry, Betty thinks I just went out to buy this. She's waiting for me. And such payment, in the event of the birth of a child, shall not exceed $1,000. What? How about that, huh? You can't say old Harry didn't take care of you. Well, what is it? Let me see. So I'm a sucker, huh? I meet people in places, huh? I buy anything they hand me. Emergencies Incorporated. Oh, an old bald-headed guy with glasses by the name of Millhaven. He was no in town. I was alone, so we heisted a few drinks. Now, that's just double talk. Anyway. I took all his money away playing shuffleboard. What is it, some kind of an insurance policy? No, 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 not the regular kind. This is insurance that counts. At least that's what the guy says. Oh, wait, wait, it says that... Payment for the unexpected expense in the family. Protection of our policyholders against sudden cash outlay. The fine print says the same. This is the only application form. Now, the idea is, this guy's association, incorporated, or whatever it is, pays off. They, uh, they pay the doctor bills and... Hospital expenses? That's what I'm telling you. Up to a thousand bucks for that baby of yours. 
And the guy says they pay off in cash, too. Thousand dollars? Brother, I wouldn't need near that much. Only, uh... Harry, look. Look, this is your policy. Even if I were to apply now, I... Ten bucks. You can give it to me next payday. What? Like I said, this is only the application. They got a record. I made a payment weeks ago. So it's an effect. You see what I mean? Give him another ten bucks. He won't remember. No, I... Come on. Sign there. I already took the Harry Trigaskis off. Put my name in the front. But, Harry, this is your policy. They won't ask any questions. They're not that kind of an outfit. Besides, what do I need it for? To pay my funeral expenses? Oh, look. This is what happens. I would want the money from the guy, and the guy couldn't pay me. He was like ten bucks, so he gave me the policy. It only cost ten bucks? Well, there are assessments or something, you know, cooperative stuff. But when I found out the guy couldn't pay, I snagged his address in case I wanted to collect. So go down and see him. He'll explain it to you. No, I wouldn't want to see the guy. Then sign it. What have I got to do? Jam the silver spoon down your throat? I'll tell you what. You can even skip my ten bucks. And when the time comes, you'll make enough money out, out of this outfit to give Betty a private room, flowers, nurses. Hey. Betty's up there waiting. Well, don't forget this. You, you got to mail it in. Yeah. All right. Thanks a lot, Harry. Listen, when you say that smile, now what's the matter? Well, it, it just doesn't seem the honest thing to do, that's all. Honest? Oh, father, you kill me. So maybe I had a few. I didn't care. Listen. Was that guy honest when he tried to palm off that baby policy on me? And I ain't even married yet. Ah! Yeah, I guess you're right. Well, I'll think about it, Harry. Good night. Like many rackets, the one involved in Blessed Expense was especially designed for people who needed financial help. Mr. Millhaver worked very hard to please his so-called policy holders to give them confidence in his company, Emergencies Incorporated. Joe, Joe Simpson, wife's name, Betty. Now there's a dull combination of names. <laughs> that makes an even 1,260, Mr. Milhaver. Yes, yes, now, let's see, where was I? I found a couple of ideas here. Burton, I met a woman once in a penny arcade back in Jones's Beach. She had a beautiful name. Beautiful. She was trying to get her nickel back from one of those picture machines. Smithford Haven. <laughs> but I forget the, Ah. Flossie Smithford Haven. Oh. People around here wouldn't believe it. How's this? Gretchen Smith. Burton, you have no imagination. Why do they always have to be girls, anyway? Ah, you have no soul. Okay, okay. Here's the name of a horse. Henrietta Jenks. Burton. Okay, Mr. Millhaven. I want you to print up a birth notice. About uh, 1,260 copies. Now, I want something distinctive in this. How shall we start? Well, as long as all the children you create are purely fictional, why not a son once in a while to carry on the family name? Daughters are more sentimental. When did you send in the application? Well, that same night after Betty went to sleep. It's addressed to Joe Simpson, not Harry Tregaskis. I didn't think he'd remember. They only want a couple of dollars, that's all. What for? Oh, one of those assessments. Some of the policyholder had a baby. I knew it would work. Boy, you're in. That means you're accepted. Now, you've got a policy. You're coming. Oh, I still don't think it's right. Oh, take it easy. It's done. You did it. Anybody would have. Just relax. All you have to do is send them the two bucks, and all your worries are over. Yeah, I guess so. Only get this. What a name to hang on a poor, innocent baby. Flossie Smithford Haven. <laughs> Burton, I met a man fishing the tuna once back in Nova Scotia. Had three children. Called them Genesis, Exodus, and Leviticus. Oh, no. That's too much. That's going too far. 
Mr. Millhaver, you're going too far with this thing. Take it easy, take it easy, Burton. I told you we'd leave town soon. Florida would be nice, don't you think? But listen, wait. You send out names like that on these phony announcements and people will know they're phony. Burton, you have no sense of realism. Besides, it seems to me you're giving birth to a few too many babies. For the law of averages, that is. You'd like to stay in a nice place in Florida, wouldn't you? Two dollars per from every policyholder, remember? But they'll cancel. <laughs> they won't pay. And what about those people who sent you their hospital bills? You can't leave them in the drawer forever. But I've, I've actually paid off. Look, a couple of times, remember? And what beautiful publicity it made for those press clippings you print. And good word of mouth, too. You see, Burton, my policy is to always give the people what they want. Where well, everybody knows that the whole world loves babies. And the same could be said of an insurance policy that pays for them. People don't question the good things in the world. Why, you wouldn't question mother love, would you? And what beast would dare to question the validity? All right, all right. Uh, Never mind the speech. But I ain't setting up no type on Genesis, Exodus, and Leviticus. You have no sense of the authentic. Well, you haven't even heard the name yet. It was the fathers, the fishermen. I want you to make out an assessment for Abraham Doyle. Oh, brother. Now, who would question the validity of Abraham Doyle, Jr.? If it's a boy, you know what? <laughs> I like girls. I'm going to bring him up right. I'm even going to teach him how to dance. <laughs> oh. oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> You're wonderful. Well, that rug's got a hole in it. Don't worry. Tomorrow morning, I'm going to fix that. What? Joe. Hmm? Joe, I know why you're worried. The most wonderful thing in the world is happening to us. And I want it to be as happy as, well, I want you to be happy. Gosh, honey, you're crazy. Well, I'm not worried about anything. Joe. You mean because the baby is an unexpected expense, is that what you mean? Well, I took care of that ages ago. What? Sure, what kind of a stoop do you think I am about money? You think I'd let a thing like that interfere? We, uh, we got a policy. We're all taken care of. Oh, what? Well, Joe, why didn't you tell me? <laughs> be quiet. Maybe... Maybe it was because I didn't want to tell you how much I want what you want. Hi, Joe. Hi, honey. Mm. Have a nice day? Pretty good. Good. Joe? Hmm? Who's Abraham Doyle? Don't search me. How do you feel today, okay? Fine, honey. I thought he was a friend of yours and I saw this clipping in your pocket. But, Joe, they call their baby Junior, and that's something I don't want to do. What's the matter? Oh, nothing. It's, it's that policy business. Whenever they make an assessment, they, they send you a clipping so you know who it's for, that's all. Huh? Just to make it legal, I guess. Or just to keep it friendly, maybe. Anyway, it's uh, nice to know who gets the money. Oh, that insurance thing. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Uh, what's for dinner? What's the matter, honey? Is there something wrong? Joe. Dr. Adams was asking about that same thing today. What do you mean? Well, he said there was a, a number of very fine hospital plans and, and the arrangements insurance companies have for helping with doctor bills. He was wondering which one yours is. It's none of his business. Joe, he was just interested. I mean, what he said was that naturally none of them can pay very much toward a baby. Otherwise, people would just take advantage of it. Are you listening to me? Darling, what I'm trying to say is that he said you shouldn't worry. That if your policy doesn't cover all the expense, not to worry about it. He understands about the service station and everything. Oh, tell him to relax. He's going to be paid. Joe. I'm sorry. Only don't say I keep worrying all the time, will you? Darling, I don't say that. Okay, skip it. But there's something else you keep saying. That you want everything for our family to be... 
honest and, well, the way it should be. Only why, Joe? Why wouldn't it be? Now leave me alone, will you? Oh, don't start that, please. What's the matter, Joe? Did you do something? Did I? No, nothing's a trouble, I tell you, nothing. Don't yell at me. I'm sorry. You know, Dr. Adams said I get all upset about nothing sometimes. <laughs> Darling. <laughs> Joe, where are you going? It's not five o'clock yet. I'll tell you later. I never should have got mixed up in the first place. Uh, Joe! Burton, I've been thinking. Yeah, so have I. It's time we should quit. That's the sixth phony birth notice in six days. That's enough. You have no energy. Now there's a beautiful name. I remember it was suggested to me by a man I once met playing shuffleboard, back in... Oh, excuse me. Scarcely, young man. This is a private office, you know. Yes, but I... Uh, well, my name is Joe Simpson. Well, you'd hardly expect me to be impressed by a... Uh, oh, Simpson, Joe! Oh, yes, now I recall. <laughs> I was afraid that maybe you... Uh, I mean, I thought that... Well, I, I want to get something straight. Uh, your name is Millhaver, I guess. Well, it might be, but uh, see here, it's five o'clock already. This office is closed. I, I only want to get it straight. You see, I, I sent in that application form. I, I guess you remember. And, uh, well, since then, I've paid several of the assessments. Of course you have. This is a cooperative organization. That's the way we work, young man. <laughs> no profits, just for the common cause. I, uh, certainly a couple of dollars here or there is nothing to the help you'd get in case of an emergency. <laughs> well, yes, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. I... I think I ought to cancel the policy. Well, I think that could be done. Of course, if you don't feel satisfied. No, no, you don't understand. It's, it's, it's a question of the whole thing just not being honest in the first place. Well, but... See here, young man. Wait, let me explain. Maybe, maybe other people can pull a stunt like that, but I can't. I know now how I'd feel if I ever accepted a payment. Well, you'd feel fine. Of course you would. Why, I was just this moment making out a birth notice. Now, tomorrow, an assessment will be sent out to our policyholders, but before that even happens, my check to that young man will be on its way. Mr. Millhaver, listen to me. When, when you're a guy like I am, it's pretty hard to say this, but, well, I thought I'd leave the whole thing up to you, whatever, whatever you think should be done. Anyway, I, I was dishonest when I accepted the policy. You were? Oh, I guess you couldn't quite call me a crook, but... Oh, no, 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 of course not. Well, you, you see, my wife came home one afternoon, and... Well, I, I don't want to get anyone else into trouble, so I'm not going to name any names, but... Well, she'd been to see the doctor, and... Well, I... I failed to see anything dishonest so far. I, you know, I never understood much about insurance. I don't know exactly what you mean. This is your whole office right here, I guess. Yeah, so what? Well, uh, as I was saying, the thing that tempted me was an outfit that wouldn't ask questions. Young man, I'm afraid I don't understand you at all. What did you come here for? Nothing. Uh, nothing. I, I made a mistake, I guess. I don't want to make any more mistakes. I mean, I... Excuse me. Well, what on earth? I told you it was time to quit. Burton, for once I think I agree with you. How fast can you pack? Of course you did the right thing, Joe. I thought I'd better check with somebody in a hurry. Well, I can tell you in one second flat, there is no such insurance or any such legitimate company. When he showed me this, I knew something was wrong. I know this fellow, and he isn't even married. You stumbled into a well-known con game, Joe. They pretend this is a cooperative outfit run by the assessments on its members. Maybe they've even paid off on one or two real babies just to make it look good. But most of those birth notices they send out are phonies. No one collects but Millhaver. And when he's collected enough, he'll get out of town, but fast. I'll pick up a couple of men and we'll run over there. Is there a phone I could use, Captain? Yes, there's one in the outer office, Joe. Harry, you know where Betty is? I've been trying to get her. Sure, she just left. She was trying to get a hold of you. She was all upset. 
Why did you tell her about the insurance stuff? Are you crazy? Where is she? What? Now, why not? I had the address, and she seemed to think that that's where you'd gone. I just Mr. Mulhaven won't be there. Huh? Get over there, I said. You're closer than I am. Get going, I'll break every head on your neck. But what about the station? Wow! No, 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 young lady. I'm sorry, but I, I don't know where your husband is. Oh, but you must. He was in some trouble, and I know it had something to do with you. Lady, he don't even know your husband. But you just said he was here. Oh, he's confused, that's all. Now, if you'd like to use the telephone. No. There's a public phone right down the hall. I was just home a few moments ago. Now, now, there's been no trouble. We're just closing up, if you don't mind. I didn't want to interfere, but he was acting so funny. And he was gone so long that I began to worry, and I... Of course. Open the door wider for the lady. Now, young lady, if you want my advice, it's always been my experience. You gotta talk all the time. Harry. Hello, buddy. You all right? Yes, I'm all right. Everything's all right. In fact, I think I met you someplace before, young man. I thought you'd remember me. Yes, indeed. You took a bit of my money away playing shuffleboard. Uh, elucidate me something already. What's going on around this joint? You'll find out. We are closing up this office. And since you like it so well, we'll make you a present of it. Sorry, but it may be necessary to lock you two up for a little while. I'm Captain Braddock of the Racket Squad. You know, that's a very good line. Mind if I borrow it? I'm sorry, but it may be necessary to lock you two up for a little while. All right, Jim, take them in. Betty, are you all right? Of course I am. Oh, darling, you've got a lot to live through yet. He'll worry about it. Look, I'll get along all right. And I'm through listening to you, Junior. Junior? Why do you think I finally woke up, got suspicious? I think I even spotted his own mistake. <laughs> what a name to pick for a baby. Mr. and Mrs. Services announced the birth of an eight pound, six ounce boy, Harry Trigaskis, Jr. Yes, in a way, it was Melhaver's love of names that made him trap himself. He and his partner, Burton, were successfully prosecuted and sent to prison. But there's one more thing about blessed expense that I'd like to make very clear. As the doctor told Betty, there are many fine insurance policies to suit many needs offered by legitimate companies. The reason Melhaver's racket was successful is because it sounded just a little bit like the legitimate thing. This is what you should look out for, because in all swindles, some clever person has worked very hard to make his proposition seem legitimate. So the next time an individual or a company no one has ever heard of offers to fully satisfy your immediate needs and without asking you a single question, just stop and remember, it could happen to you. <laughs>